Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK, and welcome to my latest bread recipe. And in this one, I'll show you how to make these delicious donuts. They're very easy to make, and because it's a no-need recipe, you don't have to have a stand mixer to make them. All you require to make these is a mixing bowl and a pan to fry them in. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. I'd also like to thank my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thanks supporters for their very kind help in producing these tutorial videos. Your amazing financial support really helps with ever increasing equipment, ingredient and editing software costs. I'll be giving you all a name splash and shout out a little later in the video. Ok, let's get on with today's recipe. And I'll start the recipe by setting away the yeast. Now it's always best to test that your yeast is alive and well before starting any bread recipe. OK, I've warmed up the milk and to that I'll add the sugar and the egg and give it a good mix. Now it's the milk and the egg that gives these donuts their soft light texture. But if you can't have or simply don't like eggs, you can substitute it for an extra 55 grams or millilitres of milk. A quick check at the temperature and that's 36 degrees Celsius, that's around 97 Fahrenheit. And that's fine. And now I'll add the yeast. Now I'm using instant dried yeast but you can use active dried or even fresh yeast if you prefer. And if you do use fresh yeast you'll need 15 grams. Now I'll give that a good stir and make sure it's all incorporated into the liquid. Right, I'll set that aside until it activates and that usually takes around 5 to 10 minutes. OK, it's 10 minutes later and time to put this dough together. First add the now active yeast mixture to the bowl. And make sure you scrape it all out of the jug. Now add the soft butter to the liquid and give it a good whisk. Next add the flour to the bowl. And the final ingredient add the salt. Even though this is a sweet bread recipe you still need to add some salt to bring out the flavour of the finished donut. Right. Now using my trusty wooden spoon handle, I'll bring it all together. And once it's roughly together, I'll switch to my bowl scraper to finish it off. And also, this is the best tool to scrape down the hardened flour from the sides of the bowl. Now as you can see, this is quite a sticky dough which makes it a great candidate for a no-knead recipe. But also I'm a firm believer that no-knead breads produce a much better flavour and texture. The downside is no-knead recipes take longer to make than kneaded recipes. Once that's done, get the bowl covered. Now I like to use a shower cap for this. We do have a selection of these for sale on the website shop if you want one. Now get your bowl into a nice warm draft free spot and there's no better location than your oven with just the light bulb on. Now for the first proof in the bowl, set your timer for 30 minutes. While you're waiting, you can lightly dust the bench with a little flour. Once the time's up, turn out your slightly risen dough onto the floured surface. And dust a little flour on top of the dough too. Now knock the dough back. 
Knocking the dough back simply means get all of the built up gas out of the dough. Once you're happy all the gas is out of the dough, get it back into the bowl. But before you do, it's always a good idea to give the bowl a thin coat of oil first. And that's just to make it easier to get it out after its final proof in the bowl. And once your dough's back in the bowl, get it covered again with your shower cap. So far so good, now get it back into its warm spot and set your timer for 45 minutes this time. Ok, time to start forming the dough balls. Start by dusting your bench as shown. Right, that's the second proof completed. As you can see, the dough has proven quite nicely. Now turn out your dough and knock it back in exactly the same way as you did the last time. Now if your measurements were correct at the beginning, your dough should weigh around 750 grams or 21.5 ounces. We need 10 dough balls, so the calculation in grams is very easy. 75 grams each. Or, if you want to do it the hard way, in ounces, that's 2.15 ounces each. <laughs> Not preaching, guys, but grams are much easier to work with. Right, that's all my dough divided up. Now form each piece into a ball as shown. Try to emulate this rolling technique on a flour free surface. Once you get the hang of it, it becomes very easy to do. I go into a bit more detail on forming these dough balls in my dinner roll video if you want to check that one out. I'll leave a link in the description or just click on the eye icon top right of your screen. Once all 10 dough balls have been shaped, cover them with a lightweight dry cloth and let them rest for 10 minutes. This makes the final shaping much easier to do. And at this point I hope you don't mind if I give my three recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. All three books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you to the website shop where all of these items are available now. First off, place a sheet of parchment paper on a baking tray. This is just to keep the doughnuts on until they proof. Right, that 10 minutes is up and it's time to form the final doughnut shape. And this couldn't be easier. Dust a little flour on the parchment paper and this is just a little extra protection against sticking. Take a dough ball and push your finger or thumb straight through the middle of it. Then simply spin it around using a couple of fingers as shown. You'll be surprised how resilient or tough this dough is. Now place the ring back on the floured surface. My preferred way of making the holes is as follows. Place a ball on the bench and simply push your finger straight through the middle and spin in exactly the same way as the first time. And that's all 10 rings initially formed. Now starting with the first one we did, give them another spin and place them on the baking tray. Once they're all formed and on the baking tray, give each one a light brush with vegetable oil. 
and this is just to prevent them from drying out during the final proof. Once again, cover the doughnuts with a lightweight dry cloth and allow them to prove or rise for 45 minutes this time. When there's only 10 minutes left on the final proof, fill a suitable pan with oil and you can use whatever cooking oil you have. Now I'm using vegetable oil, but rapeseed, sunflower and canola oil, any of those will do. Now you need to get the oil temperature up to around 160 to 170 Celsius, that's 320 to 340 Fahrenheit. Right, mine's ready and it's around 170 degrees Celsius, so it's time to start frying these beauties. Carefully lower each one into the hot oil. Just do these in batches of three or four at a time. It should take around 90 seconds per side. Just keep checking on the colour. Once you're happy with the colour, turn them over. I like to use a couple of forks for this. Right, that's the first side done. So gently flip them over. Now these may look a little pale on this camera, but that's just the lights I used in this shot. You can get a more accurate view of the colour from this camera angle. Once done, lift them out onto a plate lined with kitchen roll to soak up any excess oil. A quick word about the oil. When I'm finished with it, and obviously once the donut oil has completely cooled, I store it in a separate bottle. And I only use that particular bottle of oil for making donuts. That way I can get about 10 uses out of it before it starts to cloud up. And there you go, all fried and ready to go. And I'm going to keep these very simple and coat them in a little caster sugar. Now while they're still warm, gently toss them in the caster sugar. And if you want to make your own caster sugar, check out my Victoria sponge video. I'll leave a link in the description below the video or just click on the eye icon top right of your screen. Now get them onto a wire rack to cool. Or alternatively, you can get stuck into them right now while they're still warm. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Just look at how soft and light the texture is. And they taste absolutely fantastic. In fact, divine is a more appropriate word to use. So there you go. Donut rings, simple, easy and delicious. To store these, I like to keep half in the fridge and freeze the other half. But freeze them soon as they've cooled from the pan. You can actually keep these in the fridge for up to three to four days. Not that they last that long. But there you go, that's it for this one. I really hope you'll try them. I know you'll be given a big thumbs up from everyone who tries these. And as promised at the beginning of the video, here is the latest list of my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank You button supporters. And they are Peter Collicoat, Gordon Wallace, Natasha Bangs, Sianna Owen, Karen Malone, John Ferguson, John Shacklett, Rodney Campbell, Kirsty Williams, Pete, A.S., The Doctor, 1225, Delane Bloom, James K., Reset Sinberg, Gina McDowell, Maritza Love, Peter Kelly, Lynn K., Tommy B., Kenneth Hunter, Nicholas Holt, Melena, and Bob Brown. Thanks very much, guys. I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.